I've got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that could be a whole part of me, an open wound start to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't want to get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off, I won't let them win, I'll take a stab. I want to chase a bag, I want a way, I can change all the things I lack. I gotta face the facts, I gotta taste the knack. I'll be obsessed with the rest, I got an itch to scratch. I just wanna break these chains Always asking for greatness True to myself, I never fake it Seen too many ones that I saw they get famous And when I say the truth, most really can't take it In spite of everything I've been through, I'ma make it Fake friends, but I'm a downfall, it's toxic Day one, started to outlaws for profit All I do is write verses, no talking Loyal fans of my channel will notice that this is not the first go-kart I present But this one is specific for kids from 6 to 10 years in terms of size and power. So I gave it the name Bambini Card. As any other of my creations, I built it from a vast sheet of paper in my cellar vestibule, which took me roughly one week. There is not much to say about its purpose, it's all about driving and steering. Toughness and driving performance were important to me. The Bambini card has a weight of 54 kilograms, including the double E-Pulse motors and their batteries. The ride can be built just by joining pieces together with bolts and nuts. No drilling, no cutting, no welding. The building parts as well as the motors can be mail ordered in kits or individually under www.infento.com and www.infento.com slash parts. Under this video you will find a link to download a free step-by-step -step building guide, which includes also a list of all Infento parts and non-Infento parts you will need. At the time editing this video, all parts sum up to some 2300 US dollars, but the good news is that the whole ride can be disassembled and the parts can be reused to build a ton of other motorized rolling or even floating vehicles. The Infento building system has elevated my DIY projects up to a whole new level. I had a lot of fun building the Bambini card and I had even more fun to see how well it performed. Now let's have a closer look at some details that are functionally very relevant. Twin motors and the rear axle. The two e-pulse motors are probably the most exciting detail. Of course, this is primarily for doubling the cart's power, but there are more advantages on a second look. Each motor drives one rear wheel over a tooth belt, because the rear axle is basically divided into two half shafts. Although this is untypical for a go-kart, the solution has crucial benefits over a rigid axle. We have a true two-wheel drive, but without the negative implication of a non-locking differential. Steering goes much easier, which is important for our younger drivers. The cornering behavior is extremely good because we avoid understeer and the comparably weak e-pulse motors don't need to struggle that hard in corners. In fact the rear axle can also be transformed within a minute into a rigid axle by shifting this pre-installed hexagon bushing over the side. I tried this out once but let me assure you that this was complete rubbish. I can't recommend that at all, it would only make sense if you applied drift sleeves to the rear wheels, 
and this could mean indeed a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit these drift sleeves onto my rain tires. To control two motors running over one single throttle grip is basically very easy. In my free building instruction you will find the information to build a wide throttle cable. It is an extension cable that splits up the one cable from the throttle grip into two cables that go to the two motors. No electronics, just snipping cables and crimping wires of identical color together. In terms of motors, you have the option to use only one e-pulse motor and drive around with just one driven wheel. The power you can expect from a standard e-pulse motor is 105 watts. The use of two motors will double that to 210 watts. If you manage to flash the motor controllers as described in my video tutorial about e-pulse tuning, you can expect 390 watts from the twin motors. And if you replace the standard battery pack by a 36 volt e-bike battery, you can expect up to 730 watts, which is the version that my kids are driving in this video. This amount of power is quite reasonable. With the standard infant to belt ratio, the acceleration is very exciting and the high amount of torque allows even driving on the grass. The maximum speed is around 18 km per hour or 11 miles per hour. So fast enough to make lots of fun but at the same time slow enough for not getting too concerned about safety. Twin brake. Having two brake systems on the rear axle is not really mandatory, but they are nice to have. To actuate two brake cables in a synchronous manner, you can purchase twin brake levers on Amazon or AliExpress. These provide a bar to equalize the cable forces and some even have a practical button Keep the brakes activated in case you want to park the ride on a slope. Alternatively, you can 3D print this brake cable splitter that uses nothing but a luster clamp. You can find the link for downloading it under this video. No pedals. For easier building and driving, I didn't build foot pedals, but just what the kids already know from the other Infanto rides. Nothing but a brake lever and a throttle grip. So basically this Bambini card can also be driven by disabled kids. The footrest can be adjusted by 12 cm for kids of different ages. This is Kimi, who is 6 years old. His sister Nelly is 9 years old. The difference in body length is mostly up to the length of their legs. The ergonomic seat is made for hips with a maximum width of 28 cm or even up to 32 cm if the side pads are removed. Take a cold shower, scream until you're louder, work until you're prouder, and f all the doubters, they're just your downers. Steering. I always fought just to wear the crown. The steering goes normally very hard on go karts. I successfully got the steering forces down by using a small caster angle and high steering ratio and of course by the previously mentioned split rear axis. The steering features an Ackermann effect. This effect makes the wheel on the inside of the bend turn in more sharply than the outer wheel, because the inner wheel drives a tighter radius. Basically, this Ackermann effect reduces the load on the motors and corners and reduces tire wear. Speaking of tires, in my free instruction you will find all required information how to get and how to adapt go-kart tires to an Infanto ride. This is, in my opinion, one of the coolest upgrades ever. I 
swear to God they all let me down. Frame flexibility. Since a go-kart has no suspension, the frame must be soft enough to keep all four tires on the ground for best traction, even if the ground is not perfectly flat. The softness of the Infanto plastic connectors is rather a feature than a bug in this matter, because the frame of the Bambini kart is so soft that even with one wheel lifted up by 4 cm, all other wheels still remain in contact with the ground. So how do you think about this Bambini kart? Do you have any ideas for improvements? Write it down into the comments as well as any other ideas for rides that you would like to see on this channel. I'm truly looking forward to these discussions. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I hope to see you for my next video and until then, happy building! It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown